Twitter owner Elon Musk accused Apple of threatening to block Twitter from its app store without saying why in a series of tweets on Monday. The world's richest person also tweeted, quote, Apple has mostly stopped advertising on Twitter. Do they hate free speech in America? Musk tagged Apple CEO Tim Cook in another tweet asking, what's going on here? Musk said the iPhone maker was pressuring Twitter, which has reinstated previously banned accounts, over content moderation demands. Such an action would not be unusual, as Apple has routinely enforced its rules that led to the removal of conservative-leaning apps such as Gab and Parler from its app store. Apple, however, did not immediately respond to requests for comment. According to ad measurement firm Pathmatics, Apple has significantly decreased its weekly advertising on Twitter since Musk inked the deal for the social media platform. There's been a pattern since the acquisition. A growing list of companies have stopped or paused advertising on Twitter, which relies on ad sales for about 90 percent of its revenue. Musk, a self-described free speech absolutist, said earlier this month that Twitter had seen a massive drop in revenue and blamed activist groups for pressuring advertisers. Understand what is happening there right now is not isolated. It is interconnected with all of the other challenges to human life and human rights and human freedom that are unfortunately seen elsewhere in the world as well. I am honored to stand with all of you and to support the brave women of Iran. And like those who have come before me, to recognize that the murder of Masa Amini in the hands of the police sparked a revolution where the Iranian people, led by girls and women, said enough. We will not tolerate this oppression any longer. So I stand here honoring her memory as well as the more than 400 other Iranians who have since been killed protesting her death and protesting for their freedom and the tens of thousands who have been arrested. Their fight is our fight. The campaign Eyes on Iran, which is a multimedia art activation in the shadow of the United Nations, is intended to make sure that the public does not forget or ignore the brutal crackdown occurring on Iranian women and girls. And it is a plea to the press of the world to continue covering this horrible series of events inside Iran. Do not move on from this story, we beg you. It's the first World Cup held in the Middle East and the region's politics are never far away. Iran's protests, Arab fans' pro-Palestinian sympathies and host nation Qatar's own ambiguous diplomacy have all been under the spotlight. Iran's matches have been the most politically charged, both on the pitch, when the Iranian team refrained from singing the national anthem, and off it. A headache for Qatar, which has good ties with Tehran. Ahead of Iran's first match, security denied entry to fans carrying Iran's pre-revolution flag and T-shirts with the slogan, Woman, Life, Freedom and Mahsa Amini, the young woman whose death in custody sparked the current protests. Take the storage. We, 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 have no, we have nothing else to wear. Well, what do we wear? You go to the mall and buy a T-shirt. Iranian-American fan Shayan Khosravani shows Iran's pre-revolution flag banned inside the country. He says he has been told to hide it. They just wanted to come to a World Cup to um, support the people of Iran because we know it was a, it's a great opportunity to speak for them. We know the national team is not speaking for them, so he kind of wanted to put them in shame too, telling them like, hey, we come across the whole world to just use this opportunity to tell you guys and the rest of the world like, hey, what's happening in Iran is messed up, like you guys need to back people up. Pro-Palestinian sentiments are also on display. 
Qatari players have worn pro-Palestinian armbands, and this Israeli journalist, reporting from Qatar, met a cold response from Arab fans. <laughs> Qatar wants a smooth tournament that will cement its role on the global stage and in the Middle East. It's something of a regional maverick. It hosts the Palestinian Islamist group Hamas, but allowed Israeli fans to fly in for the first time. It has given a platform to Islamist dissidents deemed a threat by Saudi Arabia and befriended Riyadh's foe, Iran. The largest US military base in the region is here. Omar Barakat is a soccer coach for the Palestinian team, which didn't make the tournament. He says security staff have allowed him into matches wearing the Palestinian flag. It is the Arab cause. We've seen many non-Palestinians wearing the flag, non-Arabs wearing the flag. I've had, this is my fourth flag. I've, I've given away four and I've let people borrow like a lot of flags during the match just for a photo and stuff. So it is a political statement and we're proud of it. Such loyalties and rivalries have added to the political dimensions of a tournament already mired in controversy over the treatment of migrant workers and LGBT plus rights. Wall Street tumbled on Monday as protests in major Chinese cities against strict COVID-19 policies sparked concerns about the global economy. Rare protests in major Chinese cities over the weekend against the country's strict zero-COVID curbs are exacerbating worries about growth in the world's second-largest economy. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell almost 500 points, dropping nearly 1.5%. The S&P 500 and the Nasdaq both dropped more than 1.5%. Apple shares fell $3.89, down more than 2.6 percent, dragging down the benchmark S&P 500 index as worker unrest in the world's biggest iPhone factory in China fanned fears of a deeper hit to the already constrained production of higher-end phones. But I think you're going to see some real supply chain issues. Greg Swenson is a founding partner at Brig McAdam. You know, the, the unrest is actually happening in, you know, in the factory that's, that's you know, that that makes these iPhones. Mitigating those losses, shares of e-commerce behemoth Amazon.com rose nearly six-tenths of a percent after an industry report estimated spending on Cyber Monday, the biggest U.S. online shopping day, would climb as much as $11.6 billion. Also sounding something of an optimistic note, John Williams, the New York Federal Reserve Bank president. As this continues, I expect real GDP to increase only modestly this year and in 2023. Williams told the New York Economic Club that he saw the Fed maintaining its policy of interest rate hikes to combat inflation, but said he was already seeing signs that the rate hikes were having the desired effect and did not forecast an economic recession. It will take some time, but I'm fully confident that we'll return to a sustained period of price development. The Fed has been wrong so much in the last two years, um, really the last five years. Greg Swenson was far more pessimistic in his forecast and expected inflation would not come down until unemployment climbed significantly higher. I think you're going to see the Fed continue to raise rates, the pause on unemployment to go higher, as you said, up into the fives, and that will, that will result in some economic contraction for sure. This week, investors will keep a close watch on November consumer confidence data due on Tuesday, the government's second estimate for third quarter gross domestic product due on Wednesday, and November's jobs report due on Friday. The skies of Hawaii's Big Island turned a hellish bright red on Sunday as the world's largest active volcano, Mauna Loa, began erupting for the first time since 1984, ending its longest quiet period in recorded history. The U.S. Geological Service says for now the lava is contained within the summit, but they have warned residents that volcanic gases and fine ash may drift their way. Some areas of the Big Island were under an ashfall advisory issued by the National Weather Service. Mauna Loa rises 13,679 feet above the Pacific Ocean. It's part of the chain of volcanoes that formed the islands of Hawaii. It last erupted in March and April of 1984, sending a flow of lava within five miles of the island's largest city. Scientists like Eric Clemetti of Denison University have been on alert after several earthquakes hit the area. People have been expecting that Mauna Loa would erupt again only because it's erupted a lot. Um, and this is a, a pretty long period of quiet. Hawaii's Emergency Management Agency has not yet issued any evacuation orders. They have, however, opened two shelters on the island as a precaution, but also emphasize that there are no signs that lava will threaten populated areas.